What is up, Archives Nation? It's your host, with the most, Mizix. And your boy, Wenzel. So I, I want to start this off with a, a nice life story of my day so far. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm starting starting my new job with uh, the local, local sheriff's office. Mm-hmm. And I had to go get a drug test. Obviously. Started off rough. I am not used to waking up at a... Uh, Eight o'clock in the morning. That's some bull. That is some bull. Who wakes up? Yeah. I had to wake up at eight today. Also, I was pretty pissed. So, in my sleepiness, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go uh, do my my morning ritual of urinating into a toilet. Made it to the toilet. Stopped. Mm-hmm. Thought about life for a second. I was like, wait a minute. I gotta I gotta hop in the whip and drive on over. Mm-hmm. First problem is, is they told me to show up at. Got the email. They're like, mm-hmm. show up at this place at this time. I was like, oh, cool. That's where it's gonna get done. That was not where it gets done. Nice. That was like the the county's office. Mm-hmm. Massive granite building. Oh, okay. Looks like old school bank. I was like, this is this is classy. Two sheriffs sitting inside. I, st- I make it two feet in the door and some dude yelling at me, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, jeez. Oh, I'm here because I got an email and I need to bring my social and my ID. Walk in there. I take it. I had 30 minutes before the time they sent me. Yeah. No, he's like, oh, cool, give me your, your license and your social. I'll make a copy of them. I was like, oh, okay. And then she slides a piece of paper at me. This is your ticket to go get your drug test. It's across town. Jesus. So I was like, ah, oh, shit. Hop in the Jeep, mm-hmm. rip across town. I get there. Fill out 19 pages of paperwork. Obviously. Yep. Sitting down. And there's, there's two dudes there chatting. And they're like, oh, what are you here for? I'm like, oh, I'm here for Denton County. What are you guys here for? And they're like, ah, yes. We're here for Peterbilt. He's been here since 7 a.m. <laughs> Can't pee. <laughs> so we're sitting there ripping into each other, and my time comes. I go in there. Go pee. Is this one of these places where the people watch you, or do you just get to piss in a cup in a room? You just get to piss in a cup in a bathroom. Okay, I was going to say, I don't know what the what the issue is there, you know? I, I, I don't That know. guy was smoking something, I tell you. <laughs> I tell you what, I know what the issue was. They also cut him off of water. He only got what? three cups. <laughs> I I thought someone was gonna watch me pee, so I made sure to wear like the the, the nicest boxers I had. Okay, you weren't gonna touch us your dick out through the hole in the middle. Nope. I've heard stories of that. I I, I know somebody that have been meat gazers professionally for a month, and oh, they say there's they'd say a surprising amount of people would just touch us out through the middle. See, too small. I got too much clothes for that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, I go out there. I look him dead in the eyes and say, don't worry, I peed. <laughs> and sit back down. And his friend goes in. And then, then comes <clears throat> the physical. Which was not what I was expecting. I had to move some heavy crates that they kept adding weight to. And I'd like crouch down and do all this weird shit. Mm-hmm. And then came my man. Oh, I forgot his fucking name. Babesh? No, not Babesh. I'm gonna call him Kenneth. Biggest dummy I've ever seen. Mainly because he is a dummy. Okay. I had to do a body drag back and forth like three times. Mm-hmm. Just outside in the street too. That's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, this fucking sucks. <laughs> I did not see a male doctor my whole time there. Was there any doctors there? Why wouldn't you need a doctor? Or proctors, whatever you want to call them. Oh, okay. They're ladies. So There's just all a bunch of chicks telling you what to do. Yep. That seems like their 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 dream job, you know. There there was one. She she was a bigger woman. Mm-hmm. And then I when I had to go, I had to do this weird thing where I sat in a chair and like threw my legs up on my knee and leaned forward, leaned back. Mm-hmm. She had the coldest fucking hands. In the oh world. no! Yeah, of course no. They you wouldn't want you to have. A normal temperature hand to touch you. It's always got to be colder than like the witches in Northern Skyrim, you know. Yes, the, the Hag Raven. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that that was my morning. I finished yeah. that up at like noon. Hmm. Moving on. Uh, five video games have already been delayed this year. Jesus, I I have I have a sneaking suspicion. I was gonna jump into something similar, so I want to hear what you but- got to say. We are 27 days into we are. this year. Well, also, it, it's important. What games are they, and who are the developers, you know? <clears throat> well, one of them is Stalker. 
the new Stalker game that's supposed to be coming out. Oh, yeah. I heard a bunch of people bitching about that, but I ain't never heard of that. You are <laughs> missing out, my guy. Oh, Stalker okay. is a phenomenal game series. But, uh, Who? You know, Jim, Cares. Jim Belushi. Bob. <laughs> the rest of it don't matter because I don't, I don't fucking remember who they were. Okay. But I was sitting here thinking, like, should video game companies just stop announcing games so early? Maybe that's uh, that. That is, it's gonna be kind of tied into a topic I wanted to talk about later. But yeah, I think with the way things are going, you really shouldn't be announcing things until they're done, and then you like. Oh, this is coming out in six months, you know? And even though you already know it's done. Like, maybe you show up at E3, it's done. And you're like, it's coming out in December. This year. And then you just have all that time to, like, make it perfect. And add in all that stuff. What if, like, E3 hits? And they're like... Skyrim Remastered Ultimate Edition comes out now. They did that. Remember, I think we... Or we covered was, that uh, that pod that that E three on this podcast. Todd yeah, Howard yeah. came out with the goods. Yeah, he I said was, uh, Fallout Mobile. Shelter. He said Fallout Shelter available right the fuck now. And then he was like, he uh, then well he was making a bunch of promises about Fallout seventy six that turned out not to be true. But at the time, it was like the coolest thing ever. We thought yeah. we you know, remember I remember you and me were saying. Don't fuck with me, Todd. Todd, don't fuck with me. He was fucking with us. Big time. <laughs> Except for the, the uh, Fallout Shelter. That was actually really good. And it came out right then. Fallout Shelter? Good. Yeah. Fallout 76? Is okay. You know, I was actually... I was actually reading a news article about that. We got a buddy named Garth who plays it. Yeah, we did. I heard, I heard he was actually the last player that... That is playing the game, and now he has a single-player experience now. Yeah. That's what I heard. I I actually read that on IGN. Garth does now have a single-player experience because he's the last player. Garth, the last (laughs) survivor. (laughs) But, uh, moving on. Is there any any games coming out in 2022 that you're you're relatively excited for? You know, I'm not going to lie. I I was hyped on Halo. And I was just looking forward to the Halo release. I didn't look any anywhere in the future past Halo. Because we're just like kind of starting off 2022. Yeah. Would you like to know of some? I would. I'm, I'm, I want to hear these games. Dying Light 2. Okay. Don't care. In like 10 days. That's a big who. Horizon Forbidden West. That's it's another. The, uh, a Western? That's a, No, it's oh, the. That's another, another big who. Uh, Grain Trees Mo 7. Okay, okay. Another big... No. I don't know. I'm not really into the racing games except for Mario Kart. I like Gran Turismo just because, like, if you, like, crash your car, at the end of the race, they're like, okay, listen, you did 13 grand worth of damage to your car. If you want to race again, pay now. I like the need for speeds where, like, you get the cops on you and it's oh. and you, like, upgrade classes and stuff. Okay. Those are really good. But I don't, uh, I don't like just straight-up racing games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny Tina's Wonderland? No, that's a that's another big who. You don't like Borderlands? Oh, is that what it is? That is. I thought There's this was a... like Hello Kitty Island Adventures, what it sounded like. <laughs> Tiny the, Tina's? The, the character, Tiny Tina, she uh, became a thing not... in Borderlands 2. The I, I didn't. The girl that likes to blow shit up. I skipped 2. I'm not going to count. Uh, okay. Okay. I also played the, like, the prequel. I played the prequel 1 and 3. Okay. So this one is a, it's another looter shooter mm-hmm. co-op game. Um, is it just like another Borderlands? Yeah, that's I'm all I needed to hear. That's all I needed to hear. World. There was like magic Uh-oh. and swords and shit. Uh oh, well, hold on. And guns. Okay, okay. I'm and interested. Rockwell. I'm interested. Didn't know this was coming out. Uh, something called The Day Before. It's uh very similar to The Last of Us. I didn't play The Last of Us. I don't know if you did. Um, no. What is the game I'm thinking of? Dead by Death by Daylight or Dead by Daylight? That's that's kind of fun for like a couple nights, but Well here we go. This this is a good one. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. No. 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 
You don't you don't like the big blue people? From, I uh... the big the big blue people were cool maybe ten years ago. They're not so cool now. Uh, Bayonetta three? No. No. Bears and breakfast. No. It's a hotel sim. No. No. Don't embarrass yourself. Uh, Choo Choo Charles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can go play Hello okay. Kitty Island Adventure. I'm going to send you the no. picture Uh-oh. of Choo Choo Charles. Uh-oh. When does Escape from Tarkov come out? Escape from Tarkov? Yeah. Never. I was actually watching a video today. They're planning oh. on... So I don't know if you heard about this. But once it comes out in 1.0, they're actually going to get rid of the raid timer. And they're going to combine all the maps into one map, except for maybe Streets of Tarkov will be its own thing. That's understandable, because Streets is supposed to be an absolutely massive map. Yeah. So all of them are supposed to be connected. And then, mm-hmm. so what you would do is you would drop your loot in like a loot cache, and then you could also pay for like taxi services. So now they have the extracts that you can pay for. Those, are, those would be uh, taxi services that you could pay for. See that that makes sense because in the the like early early days of Tarkov, mm-hmm. your hideout, you were supposed to have like two or three PMCs in there, mm-hmm. and your scavs, mm. and that was supposed to be like your when you're done with a raid, you are in there. So you know how like so if you, I was gonna say like, because there's no raid timer, you can just be in there as long as you want. Now how it would work if you want to get out, you got to go to like a metro station. Because obviously, like, if everyone had to go to the, I don't know, some random door on, on reserve, right, to get to their, their hideout, your boy Miz is camping there all day. And same with 19 other different rats, you know? And when someone rolls up, they're getting bopped. But, yeah, there'll just be metro systems where you can go to, and it'll take you to your hideout. I mean, we, we've we kind of seen, like, how the maps are going to be connected. Yeah. With, uh, Lighthouse Shoreline and, and Shoreline. Reserve. Yeah, you can just walk... I was surprised how far you could walk onto there because I never played Shoreline before until mm-hmm. this map came out, and I was like, "Man, this is, this is actually kind of cool." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I took past the Shoreline for the first time the other night, and I was like, "Oh man, I'm pretty far on the Shoreline here. Like, am I gonna start extracting?" Because <laughs> I'm like, "Man, I'm about to start looting Shoreline if they don't start extracting me right here." Surprise! You can just walk up into a. Uh, I was like on park. that soccer course, man. I was deep. I was. <laughs> I was like, I know loot spawns on this bench. I'm about to start doing some looting over here. Like, and the one of the last notable games coming out in 2022 is Dune, Vice Wars. Dune, Dune, like the the movie. It's going to okay. be an RTS. But actually, it's based off of the the book. It's oh, did I tell you about all the nerds I work with? Oh no! Oh Are man! The nerds or nerd nerds. What? Are they boomers or nerds? No, these are these are nerds, man. I told you about how they are. Uh, they hated the Witcher TV show. Oh, that's right. I was telling you, they're like, no, how did he get from Agaroth to to High Hrothgar? That's like a three week trip on horseback, and they got there the same <laughs> afternoon. I'm like, oh my god, and they stayed late to talk about it. I'm like, you know, I'm I show up after everyone else. And these two fucking nerds are going at it. And I'm like, man, get out of the building. You don't work here right now. Like, you don't have... I know you have a family. And you got... I know you I know you got a dog to get home to. But you're here arguing about the time it takes to travel somewhere in a made-up TV show. Like, Do you know what they need to, do you know what they need to focus on more? <laughs> the time it takes them to travel home. Yeah. They got stuck in traffic that day. I tell you, <laughs> I tell you what. They deserve it at that point. Yeah. Time. Yeah. For sure. And the, the last thing I got before our, our nice intermission, what do you think of companies buying up property in the metaverse? I mean, I view it as an investment, you know? So should we go into the metaverse and be like, all right, I'm going to buy up so 12 acres of meta property? You say, they, there's the common saying, right? Don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? You're- so say you're a company... I don't know who say we're uh black rifle coffee and we're like man you know maybe it's just a waste of a thousand dollars but we're kind of loaded right now anyway with all this investment let's buy like the best property in the metaverse right now right Mm -hmm. and maybe maybe it'll just be a waste of a thousand dollars but what's a thousand dollars you know we you know we've invested our money properly and you should have some money going into risky investments you know because 
it's a risk. You might get, you might, it might pay off huge, but it might just be a big nothing, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's just a risk, man. You know, maybe they're buying like the prime real estate, and in like ten years, you're gonna be thinking, "God damn, man! I remember when he had that that commercial for the metaverse, and my ass was over here clowning him for buying property." Yep. And now he's he's in downtown Verseville. And and Black Rifle Coffee's got the prime location. You got a point. It could be it could be a huge investment. It I, it could be a blunder, but you know, it's like NFTs and cryptocurrency. I was I was gonna talk about that on my my segment. You know, I know nothing about NFTs. What about uh cryptocurrency? I know something. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I'll have to break it down. Well, uh, the, 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 there's one thing I find entertaining about cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. So there's a limited supply. Did you, what do you say? There's unlimited? Limited. Okay. There is okay. only X yes. amount. Yes. So all these people that have, that spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on graphics cards, mm-hmm. I can't wait for the Bitcoin to just be all mined up. Because mm-hmm. one... The value is going to plummet you astronomically. Think? Think? I think so. Mm. So, do you know what a, a maintenance fee is? No. So, well, in theory, yes. Like, I need to go get an oil change. That's maintenance. So, when you so say so, I'm full disclosure. I do have some Bitcoin, right? Say I do as well. Say I want to send my Bitcoin to my man Wenzel. I'm like, hey man, thanks for getting dinner tonight. Here's some, you know, let me pay you back. So I shoot you some Bitcoin over, right? Well, that wanna... costs that that costs something, you know. Like there, there has to be network infrastructure, right? So well, even well. after, let's say we're in some futuristic world, I think like 2080 is when the last Bitcoin is supposed to be mined or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So say we're 2081, sitting in our retirement home. I'm like, here's some Bitcoin. Thanks for picking up dinner tonight, right? There still has to be server infrastructure to to make that transaction happen. Okay. And so that maintenance fee, it's already coming out now, and obviously in the future, it's still going to come out. You know, I, every time you send something, it, it depends on how busy the network is and how much, uh, you know, how many people are mining at the time to help the network. I guess I'm also forgetting how much illegal activity is, like, how, mm-hmm. how many cartels use Bitcoin? Or just how much, say the government is just going wild with their power, and they're just manipulating the hell out of the currency, right? So eventually, a bunch of people just switch and say, like, yeah. you know, even say even like 30% of the people are just using Bitcoin, right? Yeah. That would be huge. Yeah. But yeah, so even if even after all of them are mined up, there's still going to be a recurring network, you know, maintenance that has to be done. And so there'll be, obviously, you know, maybe the price of graphics cards will go back up. But, um, you know. I also, I don't know if you've that. heard, but I mean, NVIDIA is working on, like, making their graphics card so it's very you know very what's the not inefficient to mine with thank like God. it'll cost more to mine with them obviously i mean they haven't like figured it out yet yeah. otherwise the supply would have you know equalized by now but they're working on it it's an issue they're working on so they realize gamers are being affected exactly that's why it's, it's uh it's actually relatively cheap to just buy a pre-built oh yeah that's what i did yeah because you know they'll give good deals to those people because they want to make sure that gamers are getting the graphics cards and not you know What's up? Vladimir my, who's uh, <laughs> mining some Bitcoin you know my I think I bought it for sixteen fifty from Best Buy mm-hmm. it's got a thirty sixty in it yeah if I wanted to build a PC with a thirty sixty in it a thousand dollars would have went I know to. Brooks spent fifteen hundred on his thirty eighty yeah. That's ridiculous. I got and part of my PC is an i7, which is not yeah. bad. I got an i7 too. I spent uh, like twelve hundred and twenty nineteen, and I got a twenty sixty and an i7, and like still sixteen gigs of RAM. So it's a fine graphics card. Yeah. But I'm out. Alrighty, we will take a quick break. A Rooney. Welcome back everyone hope you enjoyed that quick break so i have been shilling for the xbox game pass for quite some time i will say i will say 
I will continue to reaffirm that Xbox Game Pass is the best deal in gaming. You can't find a better one out there. You find me a better deal, I'll admit I'm wrong, but I won't have to. I'd, I, 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 would, I would drink... I would drink a four loco if you could find a better deal in gaming. But I know that I will not have to drink a four loco because there is better no better deal. Ready, better, <laughs> better get ready to crack open yeah? a four loco. Okay. Well, so I tell you what. Obviously, uh, this is kind of old news, but Microsoft bought up Activision in the middle of their whole scandal going on. So we're, we're, we should be expecting some pretty, uh, pretty heavy hitters to become Xbox exclusives pretty soon here right at the very least mm-hmm. off the playstation but let me tell you this game pass deal got a little bit better so you know what's better than just gaming gaming with a snack so with these trolley gummy worms not only do you get a pack of gummy worms i now these are like gas station prices i paid 250 for a bag of these trolley gummy worms and i still got a month of Game Pass and a bag of trolley gummy wares. Now this offer is a, is a, going on till the end of March. So if you're listening, you're gonna want to get in on this. Go ahead and buy yourself three packs of gummies, get you three months of Game Pass. Oh my God, was that the best decision I've made all year? Now this ain't an ad, but I just want to let you. You made it this far in the podcast. You deserve to know this information. Get you some Hold trolley on. gummy worms. You can pay gas station prices. Man, you'll be gaming for months for like less than ten bucks. What am I holding for? I, I think we should do the quick quick calculation. Okay. Uh, so we've got to figure out how much is a a year. So I believe I think I think you can only get like three bucks or three months worth. Uh, okay. So like, if you could get twelve packs for less than fifty five dollars. Oh, for sure, dude. What? I paid then, 250. That's gas station prices. That's not Walmart price either, right? I'm paying also for a lot of convenience. 250 times 12 is 30 bucks. So that means if if you could use multiple, you can, I think you can use like 3. Is what okay. I'm, so I think you can for like 750. Gas station prices where it's very expensive for snacks. Like it's still less than 10 bucks no matter which way you cut it. I'm sure if you go to Walmart, it'd probably be like 150. Gummy worms. I'm on the Walmart website right now. Yeah, okay, okay. Let me get the a status dollar. update. A dollar flat? A dollar. Dollar flat. I was I was being generous with that 150, you know? I thought it yeah. was a dollar, but I didn't want to undercut anyone. I know some people are balling on a budget. So that means for three dollars at Walmart, probably with some tax. Mm-hmm. Oh, a lot of places don't tax food. This is true. Let me let me add three to my cart real quick. But anyway, it's an extremely good deal. Not only do you get the Xbox Game Pass with hundreds of online games, mo- many of them are just Xbox exclusives and absolute legends like Minecraft and Halo Infinite, all the Elder Scrolls games because they bought up Bethesda, all the Fallout games, again, they bought up Bethesda. I'm sure you'll get some Activision games coming soon. You're going to want to hit up. Trolley Gummy Worms, get yourself three months of Xbox Game Pass. I just accidentally ordered three bags. Of <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, you're, you're getting three, three months of Xbox Game Pass coming to you tomorrow. Problem is, I, I have a year of Xbox Game Pass. You see, I have the same issue. I've already paid for mine, so I didn't know what to do. I mean, can I just tack them on? And I'm, I'm kind of wondering the same thing, you know? All right, what else you got? So... Earlier, you were talking about, you know, how come these games just keep getting delayed, right? So I was kind of wondering, what's up with the dip in quality of these games? It seemed like a lot of games really peaked between, like, 2010 and 2013. And then from there, it just took a huge dip. And I think that what you were talking about earlier is kind of related to what I'm talking about. I'm guessing they have the same root cause. And both of what we're asking are just fallouts from these root causes, right? Yeah. So before people, they would be overworked, and there would be a deadline coming, and they would be they'd be whipping those workers into <laughs> into overdrive, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of companies don't do that as much anymore. Obviously, it's really frowned upon to uh, do that to people. So I'm sure that has something to do with it, right? P- 
people mm-hmm. aren't working a hundred hours a week to get a game out the door in the last two months, right? Yeah. I'm sure there's also less passion. Like a lot of these, it just became very profitable. So a lot of people got in on it and they're like, oh, that's, that's a pretty good job. I just get to sit at a desk and fucking draw bitches in bikinis all day with some weird ass armor coming out of them. Yeah, I'll sit there and draw bitches in weird ass bikinis with armor coming out of them. Well, that are half lizards also. So I'm sure a lot of people tried to get in on it for that. So people don't really care about the game. They're just there to make money and go home like a normal job, I'm sure. Um, another theory I have is that as gaming has become a bigger industry, there's more shareholders. And so, you know, the amount of gamers has increased. And they don't they don't measure profit in how enjoyable the game is. They measure it in how many dollars they make, right? Mm-hmm. So as long as we're still willing to buy the crap, shareholders don't care. So there's really no incentive to make innovative games like Fallout New Vegas or Portal, I mean, you know? That was the problem with um, Battlefield 2042 is like that they, when they released it, they said, we were literally forced to do this by the shareholders. Mm-hmm. We, we know it's not ready. Yeah. And look what happened. It is now in the top three of most disliked games on Steam. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously that has something to do with it, but also, I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen the news today of the anti-work subreddit. I mean, I think there's some labor rights groups who've probably, I mean, it, it seems a little needed in this industry, but it seems like they're really forcing people to uh, slow down on the hours, and so we're getting less, you know, it, it's kind of correlated to each other where they get more rights I don't want to say they get more rights, but you know it becomes a better working yeah. environment for people. They, you know, it becomes more of a four-hour, a forty-hour work week. They attract people who aren't passionate about the game, and they're just there to program a fetch quest and go home. And you know they don't really care about oh, you know, hey, let me let me add in this side dialogue in Skyrim where if you open the envelope and you give it to the, and then you know if you read it before you give it to the to the Jarl, the Jarl is going to be like, hey man, why did you break my seal? Because I remember that was a Skyrim quest I had. And I was like, dude, what? Because I, then, you know, like, um, I, I forget. I was doing some fetch quest, right? And the guy said, oh, I, I appreciate you. Take this letter and give it to the Arl. It has my stamp on it, right? And so I fucking broke his stamp open and read the dang letter. And I was like, oh, damn, okay. Dang, that's wild. I, I forget what it said. But then I remember I handed it to the Arl, and the Arl was like, I see you've broken my stamp. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, God Shit. damn, this fucking dude knew that? Shit. And I still remember, like, 10 years later, because that was, like, super cool and innovative, you know? So I, I, I played an RTS from 2005 recently. Mm-hmm. It was a world in conflict. Mm-hmm. And the first time I played through it, I just did... I went through the main mission. I was like, all right, I'm going to replay it again and go for all the side missions. You get special cutscenes for completing side missions. Dang, okay. I thought that was cool as shit. Yeah. Because it, it, they weren't, like, basic cutscenes. No, it was like... Mm-hmm. You have your general, like, all oh, the the commanders are all talking mm-hmm. about, hey, the Russians are coming. But when you do the side missions, you get the the side from on the ground, mm-hmm. and you follow these two soldiers. One of them has a Walkman. <laughs> In the whole game, he's trying to find batteries. <laughs> so I'm going to spoil it. I don't give a shit, because the game yeah. came out in 2005. The, if you do the final side mission, which is like, hey, go shoot down these helicopters, but also push the russians off of off the beaches of seattle if you do that the final cut scene is the two soldiers sitting down on some crates and he's like i found batteries and rickroll plays no and th- that's the game no yep oh my god because it's supposed to be in that like late 80s mm-hmm. so that, that song was the late 80s oh it's just a song that plays yeah. Oh, I oh, thought like, it like cu- I thought it like cut to the music video and you see the dude dancing. Okay. <laughs> no, no. That would be awesome. Yeah, I was like, dude, no, fu- I'm about to look this up. But <laughs> no, they just sit there on mm-hmm. the crate and has the shitty one piece headset that yeah. you get on the back of your head, and they're sitting there just jamming along, and then the game ends. Yeah, like if your job is to just to make cutscenes for the whole game, you know, and you're literally not there because you like the game, you're just there because you got to make money to pay the bills. I mean, I imagine you'd be like, okay, well, uh, you know, sit here, let's plan out what we're going to do here. All right, so uh, you fucking take the beach, 
And you're gonna, we're gonna make a cutscene for when you take the beach, and you're gonna have Schmuckatelli talking to Snuffy over there, and you'll be like, "Hey, man, we took the beach." And that'll be yeah, the cutscene, and then we're gonna go and take this town over, and Snuffy's gonna die or something, but he's gotta go tell General Numbnuts over there, "Hey, man, we took the town over." And you know, there's, it's just you know they're just checking a box on their development yeah. checklist, you know. Do you think they could they could alleviate some of these problems if they expanded like teams? I know a shit ton of people work on a game mm-hmm. at a time. But what if they, what if they doubled it and it was like <sighs> you over there, your job, these two cutscenes, get them done by the end of the project. Maybe like that team over there, your mission one. It also uh, seems like with these creative projects, you can't have too many chefs in the ki- kitchen, you know. Like, if I just tell you, make the cutscene, right? And you're making it in some fucking wacky art style, and then it's fucking goofy as hell, and, you know, there's the that prank music playing that always plays, and it's like... You know, it's like that chicken dance song, right? And then the next one, like, the person just... You know, they, they have, you know, two years to make a cutscene, right? And it's, like, the most somber and serious thing ever. Obviously, that's that's not going to fly, right? You got one dude making a Borderlands cutscene, yeah. and you got make- la noir cutscene. yeah exactly so you can't you can't give like it can't be too many chefs in the kitchen people yeah. can't have too much freedom on their you know on the individual level at least that's understandable because <clears throat> yeah, it seems, seems like they have all the money they need to to, to make what they want but yeah it they seems like at some point you know a lot of a lot of it has to come from the ground up I think one of the problems is that a lot of these video like development companies, like take Blizzard for example, their games they've released went from RTSs to an MMO, and that's it. And even like newer WoW players are like, "Yeah, this <laughs> this isn't the same game I started playing forty years ago." Yeah. Or like um, Activision. Yeah, I mean, I was a huge, I was a huge Call of Duty fan from like four to like Ghost, and I, I like Black Ops Two and Modern Warfare Three were like my favorite because it seemed like I, they were get they they were incrementally getting better every time. Yeah, because obviously, like three to four leaps and bounds, like you know, above what was previously made, and then. You know, they're, they're in a two-year development cycle, so then the game after 4, like, it wasn't bad, but, like, 4 had made so much progress that it eclipsed that, even though that it came out a year later, you know? Yep. And uh, then after that, it still got better, but then after Ghost, it's like they they had improved to their peak. Probably in, yeah. like, Black Ops 2, honestly, but, you know, I still played Ghost because they hadn't fallen quite down to where they're at yet. I liked Ghost. I never played Ghost multiplayer. Oh, well... I loved the campaign, and I liked their, like, oh, you gotta go fight some aliens, here's, like, you gotta go secure all these things and arm a nuke, and then run. I don't know if you remember, but the uh, <laughs> the trailers for the campaign of Call of Duty Ghosts, <clears throat> oh, COVID, they had a bunch of stuff that, like, no one cared about. Mm-hmm. I remember one of their big selling points is, we have mastered the AI system. And then they showed you, like, a school of fish that would, like, swim away from you. You're like, man, I give zero, I give zero shits about this <laughs> school of fish that knows how to think. Like, what has this got to do with the Call of Duty game, man? You know? You know, you know the dude coding that was <clears throat> selling it. He was selling his ass off, and all the code was... If enter fish. player run. If player <laughs> hear pitch. Yeah. Go. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like it had nothing to do with the game, you know? So there, it seems like a misallocation of resources on that one for sure. Yeah. But the Modern Warfare series, beautiful. I was going to say that. 2019 Modern Warfare was pretty good. Um, other than... Um, they, they definitely are moving towards... They want to have a, a 1KD all around the board. Yeah. I think I talked about it on the show earlier. <clears throat> God damn it. <laughs> I need some time off from work after this, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> so they had a, they when when uh, Modern Warfare 19 came out, the 2019 version, 
Yep. They had some patents that they developed a spawn system where if you were if you were on a kill streak, it would spawn the enemies closer to you. Obviously, because they would, you know, you have less time to reload and kind of chill out and get yourself back together. People would just be spawning like right next to you. And also, if you were on a kill streak, your hitbox would get bigger. That was another patent that they had that they had filed for. And then the third one that was kind of like the nail in the coffin is that like, if you were on a kill streak again, you would take more damage and give less damage. Um. So it's like, because I, I noticed that too, just anecdotally before like that was found out. I was like, man, I'm on like a seven kill streak, and all of a sudden there's just like three dudes that show up, you know? And it's like I can never get like to the I don't know whatever like the highest one was. I don't think they had a, maybe they did have a nuke or whatever I don't remember but it'd be like I'm I just got like I called in like a like a bomb or whatever and then it'd be like dude dude another fucking dude and it's like I don't even have time to reload there's just so many people around and it's like I, I switched to a pea shooter somehow when I reloaded you know like what did they what did I reload with nerf bullets and I remember that was really frustrating I just kept getting so frustrated because I I would literally wouldn't change anything. And I would spawn in, I'd go on like a seven kill streak, die, because there's seven people spawn on me somehow. And it was just like, it was like that for like six games in a row. And then obviously there's a skill based matchmaking, which everyone knows about. That's not even any type of secret. Yeah. That's, that's public knowledge. So. And then they would take out things like tricks you could do to like, uh, tricks you could do to like counteract things. So like in Black Ops 2. If someone hit you with an EMP grenade, you could EMP yourself again to un-EMP yourself. I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, there's nothing like that in any of the new games. That's fucking cool. That is, that's some good knowledge to know, you know? Things like, uh... Things like, you know, running with the knife out makes you faster, or aiming down sight with a stock in Black Ops 2. If you have an SMG and a stock on, when you're aiming down sights, it's actually quicker than just walking normally. So when you run out of sprint, you should aim down sights and walk. I know a good one. Yeah. It's faster to swap to your secondary than reload. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so they're, they're, it's all the things that, like, is not self-evident that would help you. They take it out, so... Because they, because they're working towards giving everyone a one KD because they want even little Jimmy who plays once a weekend to have a good time. They want the Fortnite players who come over once a month to to enjoy life. Yeah, exactly. And and there's no there's no good and good at the game, so it I mean, it's real. It really just feels like you know your wheels are spinning in the mud because you might get better, and they're just gonna match you against better players. And then you play with your buddy who never plays, and it's like. You know, your buddy's not having a good time, and you're not having a good time, so it's really frustrating if you're not a not a super casual. But obviously, again, shareholders. So yeah, it's like when, it's like when I go play Rust. I, I I'm not gonna go fight anyone with a gun. It's like us playing Tarkov. <laughs> We're not fighting anyone. Our whole goal is to go in, get stuff, and leave. And if we have to fight someone, it's like a We've been backed into a corner, you know. Yeah, we're we're not actively seeking out a gunfight. We yeah, are hiding in a corner, or we accidentally ran into someone, yeah. and our only option is to kill them. Yeah, we don't set up ambushes. We don't no. hear a gunshot across the map. If we hear a gunshot, like even like two hundred yards either way, like, oh man, I think it's time to get going, man. You hear that gunshot way over? <laughs> really, man, time to bounce. Looting the houses up on Lighthouse. Yeah. Let's leave. Let's leave. Yeah. I, you know what? I'm like, yeah, you know, all my backpack's about half full. I can do with this loot. <laughs> See, I care less about the loot that I'm carrying. I care more about my gun. I was. I need the XP. So I just need to survive oh. is my main thing. <laughs> and I'd rather get out with loot and XP than killing someone and dying. Because it's like the same amount, except I get all the loot. It's like, it's like when we kill raiders. It is more profitable to kill the rogues and raiders mm -hmm. than it is to kill a PMC. I was going to say, if I just kill like one or two of those dudes and bounce, that's so much XP. Like, I don't even I need all their garbage. I'm, I'm, I got like 7 million rubles. We figure they're worth, what, three, 400 XP apiece? 
for t for two raiders, you're at like a thousand XP almost. If you do a little bit of looting and kill some raiders, that's like a thousand XP. I'm out of there so quick. I know they're worth a couple hundred XP just to like open them up. Oh yeah, because you get all that searching XP. Yep. And yeah. At that point, you just take their primary and leave. Yeah. All right. What's next? All righty. So the next thing I wanted to go over a little a little bit of a history, and then I kind of have. Uh, you know, a question for you. So, like I've said previously, I was I was really into uh, competitive Call of Duty back in the day. So I'm sure you're familiar with the term lag switching, right? Correct. So for those of you who are not almost grandparents, what lag switching was <laughs> is someone, they would wire in a light switch to an Ethernet cable. And what they would do is if they were losing a game, they would flick it a couple times. And how the server reacted is like, hold on, everyone, hold everyone, hold up. Someone's disconnecting. I'm going to pause the game, everyone. We're going to get this guy back in here, and we'll continue the game, right? That's just how they programmed it. I don't know who came up with that, but joining mid-lobby wasn't really too much of a thing back then. It was like, you know, we start a game with these people, we finish a game with these people, and hopefully no one leaves, right? Okay. So people would cheat by lag switching. And then so what developers did is they changed the code, right? If you start lagging, that's a you problem. That's not on anyone else, right? And then also it it it, it, uh, it became better uh, when they had dedicated servers, right? Do you remember Black Ops 2 Days server host switching? So I played I played mostly private matches. Honestly, because okay. I was really good. I was like at the tournaments. You know, I was at MLG Anaheim. What was the other one? Yeah. I went to uh, not Dallas. I didn't go to Orlando. So there was some other one I went to. I think it was what? Las Vegas or something like that. If you played a public server and the the server host left the game, mm -hmm. there was a solid five ten minutes where it was like figuring out who to connect to. Mm -hmm. That would happen, and I'd go eat dinner, come back. Still be trying to find a new host. Days, yeah, because league play. I would also play league play. That was really like the only public match I played, and people wouldn't really be quitting because they care about their rank, you know. Yeah, that that also kind of had the similar thing where it was like everyone here is going to start the game, finish the game, otherwise you lose. Yeah. Which is how it should be. Yeah, I mean practically, but I mean if it's a casual match, like shareholders, you know, people get mad when they get punished for leaving. Yeah. Okay. That's why I, I try to play as little ranked games as mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. Just for that fact, because I know there's there's some players who are going to go to a ranked game these days and just leave because the oh no I got a, I got a, a five minute ban that's okay I'm going to the store anyway. <laughs> yeah, I I've had a game ban that was um oh no what was it oh I got low priority queuing. What? This was when I played League uh -huh. a lot. And I left so many times. For me to play a match of League, I had a seven-hour wait. Jesus Christ. To queue in. I would play, like, one match a day. And I'd, I had that for four matches. Damn. And I had to be sure, like, oh, shit, I can't. I can't leave. <laughs> I, I, would, I would basically get home from school. Start up league. I was gonna say. To I was gonna say match. start it before you go to school. Come home and play a match. <laughs> well, the problem is when the when your like penalty is done, it's gonna cue you into a match. Yeah. So like, if I started before I went to school, by the time I got back, if it cued me in, mm -hmm. I guess school I does last that. longer than seven hours. Oh, well. yeah. Does it? No. I'm trying to think. Or, or like... I, it's like eight to three. I think it's like thirty-five hours a week. Yeah, well, it's like it, almost it, exactly seven hours. So yeah, no, you would get. I think I, live, I think uh, school is seven hours. So it doesn't, you I know. To, yeah, I went to Blaine and you, lived in Bellingham. Yeah, see, so you, you yeah. would get a match in the drive home, even if you just lived like yeah. a couple minutes away. Exactly. But no, I get home, queue in around ten o'clock. I I get to go play my match and then yeah. I go to bed. Mm. I would have made a new account. In fact, I had to make a new account because I lent my account to someone else. You you lent it to our man JJ Fire Truck Eleven. JJ badged on by my dad Eleven. Yep. He got banned. 
for calling people the N-word. So I lent him my account, and he went and called more people the N-word. I no longer have an account. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. <laughs> Alrighty, so... Back to lag switching, right? So they changed how the matchmaking system worked. They started to implement dedicated servers so there wouldn't be a player host. But DDoSing then came out, and it really hasn't gone away, right? There was a couple things before lag switching. I just picked lag switching because it was kind of the thing before DDoSing. And it's never really gone away. I remember in 2013, people were like, man... When's this going to go away? There's going to be like some type of update or some type of technology that'll stop this from happening, and we can go back to, I mean, you know, my entire internet not getting booted offline because I'm beating this guy in the Call of Duty match, right? Have you been DDoSed before? I've been DDoSed on several occasions, yes. I was DDoSed by NubTub himself. Really? Because I, I was like, no, you, you wouldn't be able to do that to me. And mm-hmm. the next thing I know my, my internet is down and my dad is threatened to put someone through a wall because he thought I broke the internet. Oh. And I was like, no, it was Patrick. And he was like, how is it? How was it? Uh, him? Yeah. He's like, he in here. Oh. How did he unplug the router? <laughs> <laughs> but, I uh, to DDoSing and he was like, I don't, I don't care anymore. Internet's back. Shut up. Yeah. So it still hasn't gone away all these years later. I would think like, you know, oh, you use a VPN or whatever, or people saying, people great... figure out, like, you know, packet limiting. They figure, you know, if you get so many people coming all at once, you know, all these new people have to wait to use it, right? This is a great segue into not our sponsor, NordVPN. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say you run a, a Minecraft server, and a bunch of dudes... <laughs> anyway, that was, that was... I'm not going to get into that tangent, but... So, I don't know if you know... Do you know where Andorra is? Andorra? Uh Uh-huh. That does not sound like it is in the continental United States. No. No, it is not. It's a tiny little country in uh, in between uh, Spain and France, right? One of those little third-grade facts they throw at you, right? So, there was a Minecraft competition going on, believe it or not. Those still happen. And this tiny little country, Andorra, had a team competing... In uh in this tournament, right? The Andorran National The Andorran Minecraft. National Man- Minecraft team was playing in a Minecraft tournament, and they pulled. So they're beating someone. Obviously, that's where they're getting DDoSed, right? Yep. So you know what happens? They that they're getting DDoSed, and Minecraft servers are really good, right? So you gotta you gotta have a lot of power to DDoS them, and it's and it's gonna take down a lot of infrastructure. You know, because that's, that's a lot of DOSing going on, right? It's a lot of packets going on. So they took down the entire internet for this country for a brief moment there. <laughs> because this Minecraft team was winning. So I'm wondering, do you have any solutions for this? Like, anything off the top of your head? The, the main thing I would think of is, you can't, you know, y- you can't just attribute you know these one-time events right but if you have a history of you know you're playing and people on the other team suddenly they start having internet problems like we're gonna start putting you in a special matchmaking system where uh people whose other teams start getting a lot of internet problems that's where you're going buddy you know the old titanfall fix where we're gonna match you with people who who have similar things going on to you a big fan of call of duty's new approach to yeah. hackers where their guns don't do any damage. Okay. Because that that just it sounds so good to me. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a sweaty hacker. Mm-hmm. Neck beard and all, like the South Park guy. <laughs> I heard that guy was on Fox News the other night. And out of nowhere, little Timmy, seven-year-old, doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Misses every single shot. And you can't kill him. And he ends up just like, Hail Mary, forty-four Magnum to the head shot. Yeah, knocks you. So uh, yeah. I do, I do like that approach, right? Mm-hmm. But the issue is, right? So say you want to IP ban them. All these cheating clients, they've got IP spoofers. They've got yeah. hardware address spoofers. You know, they've got all these things to get around all that. So I do like that. Or you know, obviously, I prefer just ban them. But uh, yeah. 
little with, easier with everything I just said, you know, it's harder to it's harder to ban someone's IP or or hardware address when it's just spoofed anyway. It's not even it's not even their address you're banning, right? So yeah. that's why I like the Titanfall approach, where uh, if they if you're kind of suspected of cheating, they'll put you in the suspected of cheating matchmaking. If you're like straight up wall hacking, you're in the straight up wall hacking, uh, you know, matchmaking lobby. And so I figure if you're in the uh, everyone on the other team suspiciously starts to have internet issues, you're in the uh, everyone on the other team starts to have suspicious internet issues camp or matchmaking, yeah. you know. Because it at least buys you a little bit more time before you realize what's going on. Okay. Which I think is wasting their time is is probably a more valuable thing to do rather than like if I spawn in and I'm shooting little fucking Timmy a million times and my gun ain't doing shit, I know I'm caught. I'm hitting the old refresh on the IP and hardware and I'm making a new account. Yeah. I can, I can understand that. Which brings me to my last topic before we get into the assholes. So, obviously, NFTs or non-fungible tokens are still on the rise. I've explained it before in a previous episode, but I'll explain it again because you said you don't even understand. So, obviously, right now, all they're used for is just a picture, right? You go on Twitter... It's some gobbledygook picture, right? And that's all it is. It's just some dude's profile picture with some gobbledygook. You could right-click it. You could save it. You can make it your profile picture, which is actually a very big complaint uh, by these NFT owners, right? So that's all it's being used for right now. Is this I, just... I have yeah. a really good story about that. that okay. On today. Let, me, let me hear it. So this dude posted, he's like, this is my NFT. You know, some stupid panda with a blue background. He has a yeah. panda and a hat. And I open up the comments. Is there like a million people with a panda with a blue hat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he made another video and he's like, he's getting like actually mad at these people. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't do this. This is theft. You're stealing my property. And everybody in the comments was our property. <laughs> with little red flags by their, their comments. Yeah. So like, this is awesome. Yeah. So all NFT is. It's just a set of data that's exclusive to you or is that you exclusively like own. So just because it's an image, it doesn't necessarily mean that you own the copyright to that particular image, right? Now on Twitter where they have that feature where you can make your NFT your profile picture and you know someone can just make their own or make, you know, their profile picture just a picture of your NFT, right? That's not a very good use for it. Like I was explaining before, it's kind of like having a one-of-a-kind Counter-Strike skin where only you own that skin, and you could give it to someone else or trade it or sell it or whatever, but it's your skin. It's kind of the same thing, but you could just substitute that skin with any set of digital data, you know? So in the virtual world, I imagine in the metaverse, you know, some property could be technically an NFT, you know? You, yeah. you probably would have some type of token that says, "Oh, he owns this, this part in the uh, in Verseville, you know, where he opened up his Black Rifle Coffee, and this guy's the admin, and he gives these people permission to use his his token to access this or whatever, you know." Mm-hmm. But I don't know if you noticed the crypto market has taken a hit recently. It's down. About 30%. I would get in right now. I think we're about to see a big cryptocurrency spike. So I just wanted to let you know. You should probably get in on the crypto game right now. I would say it's at a low and it's going to jump back up. In the past month, Bitcoin has gone down Mm -hmm. Mm 26.57%. So do you think it's really lost 26 point whatever percent of its value? Or do you think it's just undervalued in the marketplace right now? Uh, yes, to both. So you think it really has gone down twenty point twenty six point six percent of its value, and also well, it's, it's undervalued in the marketplace right now. Yes. Yeah. It's well, which one is undervalued. it? Undervalued. Let me get to it. God, it's undervalued right now. Yamaha. It's <laughs> undervalued because there's there's 
you can't go to Walmart or most Walmarts and be like, I would like to use Bitcoin as my yes. currency. I feel like if we had more stores that accepted Bitcoin, it would increase its value by mm-hmm. a, a decent amount. And I know the reason it's gone down in price is because there's more of it in circulation right now. It's like like if I if I had five thousand Jeep Gladiators and all of them were owned by someone, there'd be a lot of people being like, Hey, I want one of those and I introduce ten thousand more, the value's gone down because it's not as sought after. Obviously, yep. Yeah, if you if you increase the supply with, you know, yeah. No equitable increase in demand, then obviously the price is going to drop. Yeah, and that, that's that's the thing with Bitcoin right now is you had a lot of people that had a couple million in Bitcoin, and they're just like, you know what, I want more money in my bank account, sell. So, and now there's a large influx of Bitcoins, and now there's. So with more supply, less demand, value goes down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I.e. the Honda Civic or Toyota Corolla. <laughs> but anyway, I believe it's gonna. I, I think it's gonna. It's it's just at a dip right now. Obviously, there was a lot of people panic selling. Once it starts to tank a little bit, a lot of people just get scared and start selling. I don't get it. That is like the exact opposite of what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, like like Warren Buffett said. Warren Buffett said. Like in the middle of the 2008 crisis, someone said, oh, you know, you've lost $2 billion in the last, you know, however many days. How do you feel about this? He's like, what are you talking about? I didn't lose any money. You only lose money when you sell it for a loss, you know, when you realize the loss. So uh, I haven't realized my my gain yet because I I bought, it was at 35,000 and something when I bought. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at, I got a little tracker on my stream deck and it's at 36 something right now, so... It's, I've, I've gone up 20 bucks because mm-hmm. I bought at the that mega low that happened a little bit ago. Okay. Let's see, what did cool. I buy at? Because I, 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 I use Cash App. Oh. One, I, I can directly sell my Bitcoin from Cash App and put it in my Bitcoin or into my Cash App wallet. Mm-hmm. So when oh. I bought, it was at. Was that Monday at seven AM? Was that thirty three, seven oh four, and twenty nine cents? There is one thing I, I do miss. So, in like before the twenty sixteen boom, people used to oh. always talk about different functions that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies could be used for. And now, if you go on to any cryptocurrency subreddit ever, everyone's just talking about it like it's an investment, which it is. But it's there's a reason to invest in it, and people are not talking about the reasons to invest in it, other than it's worth this right now. We're hoping it'll be worth more later, you know. Which it does have practical functions that are actually pretty useful, you know. Like say you're living in an oppressive country and you need to buy something off the books uh, using something other than cash. It's actually very useful. So if you live in like Iran and you want to pay for a VPN, Bitcoin is your best friend. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, I'll let you do your your am I the asshole first because I've been talking for a while, so I need to, need to get back to drinking. In other words, your voice is failing you. I don't do this All much right. talking normally. Am I the asshole for not buying my girlfriend the gift she asked for for her birthday? Okay. I, 30 male, have a girlfriend, 28 female. He's robbing the cradle here. I six years. <laughs> Two years. <six. laughs> and they've been getting together for six years. That means he was twenty-four and she was twenty-two. I see nothing wrong with that. Do we need to have a conversation with Chris I, Hansen? I believe I'm robbing the cradle at this point. I'm the three years older than my wife. This is true. It's always a problem to get her something for her birthday, as it is. So I asked her what she wants. At first, she said she doesn't know, as they do, and that some nice dinner would do. That's but cap. yesterday, yeah, that, that is. If she says that, she's lying to you. That's something in addition to a gift. Mm-hmm. 
But yesterday, she came home from work and told me she saw a very nice set of Japanese knives she would like, but it's a bit expensive gift. Grammar guy. The knives were 254 whole doll hairs, which I think is nonsense to pay for knives, since she is not a professional cook. She cooks as a hobby. I told her I think it's unreasonable and that I won't buy it for her. She said okay, but was quiet the whole evening. When I asked her what happened, she told me I should ask her what she wants if I don't want to take it into consideration. I think that's a bit childish. She gave me one suggestion, and I said no. It shouldn't be such a big deal. Also, money is not the problem. We both have nice salaries and are child-free with reasonable monthly expenses. We don't have any limit for the price of the gifts. For my last birthday, she got me a summer trip to Turkey. So, am I the asshole? Yeah, I'll, you fucking I'll, I'll you Are you fucking on crack, man? You went to Turkey and she wants a set of knives and you say no? <laughs> now, I will give it to him. I was like, 250 bucks. I said, man, that's, that's fucking a lot, a lot for knives. But then he explains, oh, we're kind of fucking loaded and we just go to Turkey for fun. You are on drugs, dude. Yes, get her the fucking knives. <laughs> I'll, I'll read the edits now. <laughs> Edit one. Okay, let me. Uh, Everybody is very fixated on the trip to Turkey. Yes, it was an awesome gift. I just wanted to say I finally got her a weekend getaway to Italy. She will definitely love because she is in love with Italian food and the culture in general. This dude is on drugs. What is this guy smoking? I gotta get whatever this is. She says, "Oh, just get. Uh, I don't know what I want. I guess just give me these two hundred fifty dollars knives." And you're like. I guess I guess we'll go to Italy. No, man, you fucking idiot! This dude's the biggest dummy I've ever met. Where's this guy work? I gotta go. I gotta go work with this guy. Just wait, it gets better. Oh my god! <laughs> I ordered the knives directly from Japan and had them custom delivered for her in a black design that will match her kitchen she picked out. That we made ourselves a few months ago. And I will give it to her when we get back from Italy. I'm not willing to risk my luck and carry it with me. Edit one and a half. I finally canceled the order. And I'm going to oh, take her to the store with Japanese knives I found in my county. Edit two. I get it. I messed up. Oh, this is just people on Reddit being people on Reddit telling him. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, no, this dude. Died. I thought, I would, like, if, if she, if my wife was like, oh, can you give me these $250 knives? I would consider, I'd be like, yeah, I guess she, she is in the kitchen cooking most days, you know, she's, uh, you know, I was like, oh, I'll think about it. But if 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 it's like, oh, do I get a $250 knife? If she, will, she wants $250 fucking pencil. And the alternative is a trip to Italy. I'm getting the $250 fucking bobblehead, you know? Yeah. Obviously. It sounds like you wasted a trip to Italy. I would much rather be like, hey, I know you wanted these knives, and if I could afford it, would you rather the knives or to go to Italy? Because then if I think like, I think if two hundred fifty dollars is a question to you, you probably shouldn't be taking weekend trips to Italy. No, unless they live like in Germany or something, you know. Does not say where they live. Okay, if they live I'm in Europe, assume... it makes more sense. I'm going to assume the United States. Uh, his grammar was poor, so maybe... Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe they live in Europe, and it's just like a weekend trip to, like, Savannah, Georgia, or whatever, you know? Oh, I found another edit. We live in Europe. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You're still a fucking, you know, not yeah. a smart guy. I get that, but... It's weird that they use dollars. Yeah. That kind of threw me. If he said euro, I'd have been, oh, man, it's fucking euro. Yeah. Doesn't know how to do math. I just know it's more if it's a euro. But yeah, this this dude, you are an asshole. Hmm. And that that is also what Reddit has agreed. I don't know if he's just... I, I kind of want to say no assholes here. One gigantic dummy here. 91% said he's an asshole. Okay, yeah. I... I also hold the position that you can be an asshole through negligence, which includes being a big dummy. So, yes, this guy's an yeah. asshole. I agree. Okay. All right, let's hear yours. So, am I... 
the asshole for telling my 35 male half brother, 13 male, that I don't want to be his friend and actually want nothing to do with him at all. My mom got remarried to her current husband 14 years ago. He's an okay man, but my dad will always be my forever. Well, well, um, hold on. But my dad will always and forever be my number one. When they announced to me that they were having a baby, uh, uh, I was freaked out. I told them the uh, from there on out that I don't ever want to be involved in this kid's life. I find it super weird that he is 22 years my junior. Quick pause. If you don't just say he's 22 years younger than me, I don't like you. Also, the people that say, oh, it's half past any, I don't like you either. I'll resume reading this. I'm old enough to be his damn dad. Why did my mom even need to have another child at 42? That baby fever was strong, apparently. I found the entire thing uh, disgusting, to say the least. Uh, The years ago, uh, then, years ago, uh, by, the years ago by, and when my half-brother, okay, he didn't have, I didn't fuck that up, he fucked that up. Um... When my half-brother was around 10, 10 years old, he started saying how much he wanted to meet me. After a lot of nagging from my mother, I said, whatever, fuck it, alright, I'm gonna do it. From our first encounter, he's basically clinged on to me. For the past three years, he has constantly tried to make me like and accept him, but I just can't do it. He's a nice person and all, but I still feel like my mom, my mom's actions uh, from so many years ago are nasty. So I involuntarily associate with him. I can't help it. Uh, I never wanted a sibling. Yesterday he was over at my place and kept asking me to watch a movie with him, which I didn't want to do. I ended up going off on him and told him I don't want to be his friend and actually I want nothing to do with him. So he immediately started crying and apologizing to me saying that he doesn't have any friends and gets bullied at ski. For his introverted nature and he just doesn't want or he just doesn't understand why I despise him so much. He said that he's so tired of feeling rejected all the time uh, when he doesn't uh, all the time when all he does is be good to everyone. He said sorry one more time told me that despite my huge hatred toward toward him he still loves me admires me and respects me a lot. Uh, Then he runs out of the house, and he hasn't reached out to me ever since. Yeah, you're an asshole. You think this guy's the asshole? I do. I think this guy is taking out his his frustrations with his mother on the the half-brother. Uh-huh. Because he didn't didn't really have anything negative to say about the Mm half-brother. More of just like, I don't like him. More of like... Why did my mom do this? Mm-hmm. Why is she like this? And it's, it it seems more he's frustrated with his mom mm-hmm. than really anything. Also, the kid's 13. Mm-hmm. And you're classified as the older brother. It's literally in his brain coding to be like, ah, oh, yes, big brother. We've all played Bioshock. <laughs> you know, Mr. Bubbles, all that bullshit. Okay, okay, okay. I, I think the mom is one. I wonder how she's getting pregnant at like in her forties. Oh, I was about that. to ask you. Like, what if your mom last year gave birth to some kid? I have step siblings. Are they twenty two years younger than you? Um, how old? I think the youngest is currently ten. So he's thirteen so years th- younger. Than I have to go ahead and throw an extra ten on there. I would still deal with him. I'm not excited about seeing him, but he's not like a, <clears throat> a shitty... I was going to say, there's a little bit of only child syndrome going on here. Like, he says, I didn't ask for a sibling. Like, yeah, no one does. That's not a choice you get to make. But... I didn't ask for step-siblings. Did I get them? Yes. Were they annoying? Yes. But when you're 22, and that's when they give birth is when you're 22, I feel like... You're, you're a lot closer to being an uncle than a brother at that point, you know? Yeah. So... And, not I wanting to just like, be friends with a 10-year-old, you know. That would also be a little weird because you're, you're, like, you're established. You're working on getting established at that age. Yeah. Like, I, could you imagine? Well, he's 35 mom, now, you know. 
Could you imagine your mom comes along and is like, hey, I got another kid on the way. That's why I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of like, I don't know, man. That's a fucking you problem. I'm not getting involved with that shit. I feel like it would be very different if, like, they saw each other, like, once or twice a month. Mm-hmm. I feel like it'd be a, a completely different ball game at that point. Yeah. For sure. Like, then it'd be more like a cousin. We're like, I don't know about you, but like I see my cousins maybe like once a year. See, I see my cousins. Like there's no way for me to get into drama with them or anything like yeah. that. Where it's like, oh, every time I see them, oh, how are you doing? This is what I'm up to now. That's right. I'm very thankful my, my cousins here in the state that I live in are very similar to me. Yeah. Excluding the fact... They went to college and have some resemblance of intelligence. Oh, yep, yep. But, but they're also the, the female cousins and my male mm-hmm. cousin, also from the army. Um, when we get together, we rub our singular brain cell together. And okay. Be stupidest shit. <laughs> yeah, like, my I'm different from a lot of my cousins. Like I had I had common sense, and when I visited them, they were all acting like they're gonna die if any of them get get COVID. You know. Hmm. Even my, though they're all twenty and healthy, yeah, they're like no oh, COVID. Yeah, my cousins back home, up in Washington, I do not get along with very well. <clears throat> like at, at families, we can be civil. <clears throat> We're just too different. Yeah, they're more into the party lifestyle. I'm more into the. I want to sit at home and drink and play video games or yeah. go to the shooting range. Yeah. That's fine. That they're, they're, that's how they want to live. I'm not gonna go up to them. Yeah, I'm not gonna like argue with my cousins or nothing like that. But yeah, but no, I don't I, know. I, I, I don't know. If this guy's the asshole. I still think most of his dis disapproval is towards his mom. Hmm. Like I can't imagine being mad at the the offspring because it exists. No. But I'm wondering, like, why is he just dumped at his at his house? Like, yeah, that's <clears> weird. <throat> like, hey, uh, your your half brother is. Me. I couldn't imagine even now, like, oh, this is your brother. He's 13. Uh, we're just gonna dump him here with you. Let alone like 10 years from now, if my mom came and was like, oh, he's, he's your half brother. He's 13. We're just gonna dump him on you. Yeah, I'd be like, dude, up. what the fuck? <laughs> like, no, I ain't. Yeah, me and my mom would probably have a, a, a brief conversation of like, I have, one, I have a job. And I am i don't want to have him just sit here at my house all day. Well, so from the way I read it, that's not really what's going on. It's just, I, don't, I don't know why he's over there, like without his parents. But yeah. if my mom just dumped some 13-year-old at me, I'd be like, that's going to be a big hell to the naw. Even if my mom brought one of my step siblings down here and was like, "This is gonna live with you for a week," I'd be like, "Why?" Like you better have just died or something yeah. like that before that happens. You better be going out of this country. Yeah, so it period. definitely seems like he should be talking to his yeah. mom, you- but at the same time, if the kid's gonna be, you know, yeah, and it, it sounds like he can make like a slight effort to get along with the kid instead yeah. of just. From the go, being like, I fucking hate you. Because that's what, that's what it sounded like. Yeah. It was like. Well, we don't know what his mom's done. Because I remember my mom was talking to me and my brother about She's like, oh, yeah. She, you know, she got remarried like seven years ago. Yep. And she was like, you know, we're thinking of having a kid. I mean, and they're like, the, the way they tried to sell it was like, oh, you could go play catch with them. And you could teach them this and that. And we're like, it, it ain't our fucking kid. Like, <laughs> you, <laughs> he can do that. You know, that's. You guys can. Do that's that. not. I'm yeah, exactly. Together. Like me and my brother were like. So maybe that's also what's going on is they expect him to take some type of responsibility for this kid that's half of his brother and he didn't ask for. And also it, it happened like way beyond what would be considered reasonable for his siblings. Because um, my grandparents they had they had seven kids, and like one of them was like seventeen when they had the last one. Mm-hmm. So, uh, even those two, they're like full siblings and everything, but they just don't, it's not like they don't get along or anything, they just don't really talk a whole lot because growing up, they never really saw each other outside of like holidays. So they, they're more yeah. like cousins and they, you know, they, they act more like cousins 
how I act with my cousins, then they act like siblings just because one of them's like 46 and the other one's like almost, you know, you know, over 60, you know. Yep. I get along with my, my younger cousins significantly more. Mm-hmm. But that's because they, they play video games. Okay. Or at least one of them. I'm like one like... of the youngest cousins out of like... It was it, it was 14, now it's 13, but... But uh, do you want to know why this guy is the asshole? Sure. Because he doesn't have an outro. <laughs> <laughs>